of God, a place of emotional security. And we just want to thank God uh, for what he is going to do through this tonight. All right. So Song of Solomon, chapter two, verses three to five says, my lover is an apple tree, the finest in the orchard as compared with any of the other youths. I am seated in his much desired shade. Another translation says, I delight to sit in his shade and his fruit is lovely to eat. He brings me to the banquet hall and everyone can see how much he loves me. Oh, feed me with your love, your raisins and your apples for I am utterly lovesick. Of course, our minister Marlon will have a totally different spin on this, but that's tonight, let's press in on what we're doing in terms of the shadow of God. So the first thing that we see is that when it refers to the shadow, uh, we see protection in oppression. The word shadow is a conventional Hebrew metaphor for protection against oppression. Thus kings were referred to as the shade of those who were dependent on them for protection. The Lord is a protective shade of his people. And as we see in Psalm 36 verses six to seven, how excellent is your loving kindness, O God. Therefore, the children of men put their trust under the shadow of your wings. And so it speaks to protection, finding refuge under the shade of the king. There's also protection for nations. In Deuteronomy 32, verses 8 to 11, it says, when God divided up the world among the nations, he gave each of them a supervising angel, but he appointed none for Israel, for Israel was God's own personal possession. God protected them in the howling wilderness as though they were the apple of his eye. And that's a whole other uh, lesson looking at what it means to be the apple of God's eye. He spreads his wings over them, even as an eagle overspreads her young. She carries them upon her wings as the Lord does his people. The Lord, there's a, there's a protection under the wings of God for nations. There's also protection from enemies. Psalm 17, eight to nine, David said, protect me again as you were the pupil of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings as you hover over me. My enemies encircle me with murder in their eyes. He also said, Psalm 61, four, I shall live forever in your tabernacle, all to be safe beneath the shelter of your wings. So there is a place of safety. There's a place of refuge. There's a place of covering under the wings of God. The shadow of his wings provide that place of cover and protection. In 2 Samuel chapter 15, the account is given of King David as his entire household fled Jerusalem to escape his son Absalom who had conspired against him. And the whole countryside came together to see David leaving and they wept aloud as all the people passed by. King David was fleeing for his life when he wrote Psalm 63. It is in the context of that uh, pursuit of his son to kill him that he wrote Psalm 63 which is a confession of longing for the security that the presence of God offers when deadly enemies threaten our lives. Listen to verses six to nine of Psalm 63. David said, he was probably under the, lying in a tent or outside just looking at the stars. He said, I lie awake at night thinking of you, of how much you have helped me and how I rejoice through the night beneath the protecting shadow of your wings. He had an understanding, he had a revelation of what it meant to be under the protective shade and covering of the wings of God. He said, if I follow close behind you, protected by your strong right arm, and again, we also look at the arm of God uh, that, that protects us uh, as, as the enemies assail us, the right arm of God is there for that protection. But those plotting to destroy me shall go down to the depths of hell. 
So in the midst of his predicament, in the midst of his flight, David sought refuge under the protective shelter of God's wings. God sheltered David under his wings. So how do we relate this to marriage? Uh, what is the connection here with marriage? And there is a connection uh, in terms of the shade of God, the shelter of God, the wings of God, uh, and marriage. And let's look at it. It is interesting to note that in the first encounter that Boaz had with Ruth in the book of Ruth, mention was made of Ruth being under the wings of God, a protective shade, a, a cover, a refuge for her. Boaz said in Ruth chapter two, verses 11 to 12, he said, yes, I know he was referring to Ruth being here and she was asking, you know, why are you so kind to me, etc." And she said, he said, I also know about the love and kindness that you have shown your mother-in-law since the death of your husband and how you left your father and mother in your own land and have come here to live among strangers. May the Lord God of Israel under what? Under whose wings you have come to take refuge, bless you for it. So Ruth's loyalty to Naomi, her widowed mother-in-law, brought her under the protective covering, the protective shade of the Lord God of Israel. If Ruth, like Orpah, her sister-in-law, had left Naomi and returned to her gods and her people, she would have forfeited this opportunity to be under this protective shade. When she made her Ruth 1.16 declaration, she brought herself under the covering of God. And it, it's a very famous declaration. She said, entreat me not to leave you, nor to return from following you. For where you go, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. You know, one translation says, where you're buried, there will I be buried. Your people shall be my people and your God, the God under whose wings you have come to take refuge will be my God. I will now come under the protective shade of God. Sometime later, Naomi gave Ruth advice for getting married again. Ruth didn't tell Naomi, that's none of your business or she had no desire to get married again. Let's look at her response in Ruth chapter three, verse five. Naomi says, my dear, isn't it time that I try to find a husband for you and get you happily married again? The man I'm thinking of is Boaz. He has been so kind to us and he's a close relative. I happen to know that he'll be winnowing barley tonight out on the threshing floor. Now do what I tell you, bathe and put on some perfume and some nice clothes. We will get into that when we look at the nose of God, the scent of intimacy. Uh, so we'll leave that for now. Now do what I tell you. Put on some nice clothes and go down to the threshing floor. But don't let him see you until he has finished his supper. Notice where he lies down to sleep. Then go and lift the cover off his feet and lie down there. And he will tell you what to do concerning marriage. And Ruth replied, Okay, no problem. I'll do whatever you say. So this was a point in Naomi's question about Boaz. Is he not our relative? She reminded Ruth that Boaz was their, Boaz was their Kingsman Redeemer. And the Kingsman Redeemer was responsible to buy a fellow Israelite out of slavery and, and all the, 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 the responsibility that they had in Leviticus 25. We see that. They were responsible to buy the family land back that had been forfeited. They were responsible for carrying on family name by marrying a childless widow. So that means that they would get married to a widow. And when they had a son, that son would have the name of the widow's former husband, not the present husband. And so it was really an important tradition. And, and, and we see God's intervention and in even uh, preserving the institution of the family in Israel. And it is also important to him today. So Ruth accepted Naomi's advice wholeheartedly and without question and made good on her promise. Boaz's response to Ruth's request also highlighted how she honored Naomi. Here are Ruth's words as she requested of Boaz that he would make her his wife according to God's law. In Ruth 3 verse 9, she said after she went and she covered herself 
lay at his feet and covered herself. She said, I am your servant, Ruth, she replied. Spread the corner of your covering over me, for you are my family redeemer. And Boaz replied, thank God for a girl like you, he exclaimed, for you are being even kinder to Naomi now than before. He said, naturally, you'd prefer a younger woman, even though poor, but you have put aside your personal desires. And verse 11, he said, now don't worry about a thing, my child. I'll handle all the details for everyone knows what a wonderful person you are. So she lay at his feet until the morning and was up early before daybreak because Boaz had said to her, don't let it be known that a woman was here at the threshing floor. So he told her to bring her shawl and he tied up a bushel and a half of barley in it as a present for her mother-in-law. So we thank God, we thank God for this. So in the marriage relationship, many husbands wish they had a wife who submitted to them the way Ruth is being told to hear. But do they provide the kind of godly leadership and care and concern that Boaz showed towards Ruth and others? In the marriage relationship, many wives wish they had a husband who loved, cared, and treated them the way that Boaz did towards Ruth. But do they show the same kind of humble submission and respect that Ruth showed to Boaz? The conduct of Boaz calls for the highest praise. He did not attempt to take advantage of Ruth in any way. He did not disdain her as a poor, destitute stranger, nor suspect her of any ill intentions. He spoke honorably of her as a virtuous woman. He made her a promise, and as soon as the morning arrived, he sent her away with a present, and Boaz made his promise conditional, for there was a kinsman nearer than he, to whom the right of redemption belonged. Ruth's obedience, we have to see here, her obedience to Naomi, her widowed mother-in-law, brought her under the protective covering and shade of Boaz. Because he said in chapter four, Ruth, I have acquired as my wife. Now back in chapter one of Ruth, Ruth, when, when she made the decision to go with Naomi and leave her mother, her father, her home, her gods, her, her land, it seemed that if she was giving up the best chance of marriage, because remember Naomi said to her, even if I had a son today, would you wait for him to grow up to get married to him? But Ruth decided to put God first. And because of that act, God brought her together in a relationship greater than she could have imagined. Today, God will bless those wanting to get married in the same way if they will only put him first. Ruth's obedience to Boaz, so the, her obedience to Naomi brought her into this covering, but her obedience to Boaz removed the cover of shame from Naomi in providing a son that would carry on the family name of her dead husband. Take note of Naomi's encouragement to Ruth to come under the covering she was experiencing with Jehovah, his upgrade and upgraded her own protection plan. Boaz and Ruth were selfless and they submitted to the requirements of the day. Then Boaz, in Ruth 4 verses 9 to 10, Boaz said to the witnesses and to the crowd standing around, you have seen today that I have bought all the property of Elimelech, Kilion, and Malon from Naomi. And with that with it, I have purchased Ruth the Moabitess, the widow of Malon, to be my wife, so that she can have a son to carry on what the family name of her dead husband, not my name Boaz, but the family name of her dead husband, Marlon. That was the selflessness of Boaz as he acted as Kingsman Redeemer for Ruth. As the Lord made Boaz a protective wing over Ruth, here's an example of the role of husbands in marriage. As the Lord shows us in Ezekiel 16 verse eight in his own experience with Israel. He says, later I passed by and when I looked at you and saw that you were old enough for love, I spread the corner of my garment over you and covered your naked body. I gave you my solemn oath and entered into a covenant with you 
declares the sovereign Lord and you became mine. And today we are so thankful for that covenant relationship that we have with God. He is a covenant keeping God. And there are so many benefits of this covenant. And we are grateful to him for this opportunity, for this covenant relationship that we have. Husbands, as you submit to Christ, we looked at that foundation with Pastor Gibson for the first three nights. As you submit to Christ, your role is to protect your wife. Your degree of covering is an indication of the degree of your love for her. You remember Joseph? Joseph didn't understand what was happening with Mary, who has come and said she's now pregnant. And he sought to end the engagement with Mary. But how discreetly he spent time trying to find ways in which it could be done without bringing harm to Mary. Her well-being was his concern. So the how it was done was important to him. Wives, you need to accept and lovingly receive your husband's covering. And this entails obedience and loving submission. So let's look at it. How did Boaz cover his spouse? We look at it in Ruth chapter three, verses 10 to 11. So he says, in response to Ruth, he said, the Lord bless you, my daughter. So Boaz did not misunderstand Ruth's intentions. He knew her character. He said it. He said, everyone knows that you're a woman of noble character. Imagine in the short space of time that Ruth was in the town in Bethlehem with her mother-in-law, her character was evident to all. He knew her character. He was assured of her love. Such a beautiful love story. You know, how he invited her to come and have lunch with them how he cared for her, how he told the workers, do not interfere with her, the male workers, how he told the women workers to look out for her, how he told the male workers to drop, you know, the little barley heads on the, such a beautiful love story. So he was assured of her love. And so irrespective of her actions, they were examined through what he knew of her. He did not misunderstand her intentions. That's so in critically important. Husbands, as you, as you, as you get into an understanding of your wife, you, she may do things that you don't understand, but you don't misunderstand her intentions because you have come to understand her and know her character. The second thing we notice about Boaz as he covered his spouse, he used his words to bless her. He didn't tear her down. He said, thank God for a girl like you, for you're being even kinder to Naomi now than before. Naturally, you would prefer a younger man, even though poor, but you have put aside your personal desires. As husbands, we need to cover our spouses through the way in which we speak about them. Even with, 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 with the guys, you know, you must honor your wife in how you speak. You must bless your wife. Irrespective of what she does, does not do, what she says, does not say, you must use your words to bless her. That is another way in which you cover your spouse. You cover your spouse with the words that you use to bless her. You don't tear her down. Thirdly, Boaz was responsible. He said, I am going to follow through all the details. You know, how many times have you promised <laughs> that you're going to do something and all now <laughs> it hasn't been done? You know, we need to cover our spouse, you know, with being responsible. You know, by following through on things, you know, you say you're going to do this, go and do it. You say you're going to pay this, go and pay it. You say you're going to look after this, look after it. You say you're going to repair something, repair it. You know, follow through with all the details. Be responsible. That is another way in which you cover your spouse. Another way Boaz covered his spouse, he was transparent and he did not withhold information from her. Now, Ruth came, Naomi sent Ruth to Boaz thinking that, Boaz was the Kingsman Redeemer. Ruth went requesting this marriage, thinking that Boaz was the Kingsman Redeemer. But Boaz knew that there was someone else closer to them who would have fit the bill of being a Kingsman Redeemer. So he said to her, to Ruth, you know what? Yes, I know your love for me. Yes, I love you too. I want to marry you too. But there's one problem. It's true that I am a close relative, but there is someone else who is more closely related to you 
than I am. And, you know, when you read the accounts, you know, the way in which Boaz crafted his submission to this kingsman redeemer, he presented the land, you know, you know, Ruth is, uh, Naomi is selling land. <laughs> Are you interested in buying the land? And he said, of course, I'm buying the land. He said, okay, good. Boaz said, however, with this land, you have to also marry Ruth. And the king's one redeemer said, uh-uh, no, 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 because she's going to inherit what my son needs to inherit. So, so the, even the way in which Boaz presented the information, there was, he used wisdom, all right? So he was transparent and he did not withhold information from her. He didn't leave her hanging, fifthly, but he promised he would follow through on her request and he did so. He made good his promise. And if you notice, when Ruth went back to Naomi and Naomi heard what had transpired, Naomi said today, this very day, he is going to make good his promise. So Boaz also had a reputation of making good his promise in whatever he decided to do. Whatever it took, Boaz covered Ruth. He exercised wisdom. He was shrewd. He was invested in the process. So how did he cover Ruth? He did not misunderstand her intentions. He used his words to bless her. He did not tear her down. He was responsible. He was transparent. He didn't leave her hanging and he made good his promise. So we now move on to Ruth. So how did Ruth accept Boaz's covering? Because there must be an acceptance of that covering. You know, as the, as the men provide the covering, as the husbands provide that covering, as wives, we have to accept that covering over our lives. And how did Ruth accept it? Number one, she submitted to his covering. She lay at his feet until the morning and was up early before daybreak. Now, I want to say about this whole matter of covering that, you know, it might have a certain uh, connotation for us here in the Western world, but uh, this was not how the gesture, it was not a provocative gesture. Uh, it was, this is not how it was to be understood. In the culture of that day, this was understood as an act of total submission. In that day, this was understood to be the role of a servant to lay at their master's feet and be ready for any command of the master. So when Naomi told Ruth to lie down at his feet, she told her to come to him in a totally humble and submissive way. Yes, he's a kingsman redeemer, but don't go claiming and saying you need to come and marry me. No, no, no. You, there's a way that you do it. So Ruth submitted to Boaz's covering. If Ruth had not submitted to his covering and decided to shift her position from his feet, that covering would have been compromised. So she submitted to his covering. Secondly, she was obedient to his instruction. He said, lay here until daybreak. And she followed his instruction. She didn't twist, she didn't squirm. She didn't say, you know, I want to go. She, she just followed his instruction. And it is in obedience that the blessing comes. She was obedient to his instruction. Thirdly, she waited patiently for him to do what he needed to do. When she went back to Naomi and reported, Naomi said, okay, let us wait. And that's what they did. She didn't try herself to go and find out who this Kingsman Redeemer was. She didn't go on Google and say, let me find out who this Kingsman Redeemer is, who is closer than Naomi. She didn't go on the streets and say, Boaz said that there's somebody closer to me. Is who, do you know who this person is? Do you know anything about him, where he lives? She waited patiently. She did not interfere with the process. Irrespective of their feelings for each other, there is a way that things had to be done. And she waited patiently. So how did Ruth accept Boaz's covering? She submitted to the covering. She was obedient to his instructions and she waited patiently. She kept her mouth quiet and she waited patiently, all right? First Corinthians 11, three says, but there is one matter I want to remind you about that a wife is responsible to her husband. Her husband is responsible to Christ and Christ is responsible to God. In a marriage relationship, there is authority from Christ to the husband and from the husband to the wife. We dealt with that in the first three days. The authority of Christ is the authority of God. And any man who speaks with God or about God in a way that shows a lack of respect for the authority of Christ dishonors Christ. 
And in the same way, a wife who speaks of God in a way that shows a lack of respect for the authority of her husband dishonors her husband. And even worse, she dishonors herself. I intentionally selected this photo that you're seeing here to give us an additional understanding that the authority that we submit to serves as our covering. When we reject or disrespect that authority, we walk out from under that covering and expose ourselves to the raindrops of stress. We taught our children, for example, that disobedience carries with it its own reward. When you disobey your covering authority, you walk out from under that covering and that protection can no longer cover you. So when we say to our children, stay inside, you know, uh, do not come out, we're going, coming back, don't go outside. That's an instruction. When they disobey that instruction, they have walked out from under the covering of that uh, authority and they expose themselves to the enemy because they have walked out from under the covering. When your children understand that basic principle, they will not easily disobey you. When they understand that when they disobey you, they walk out from under that covering. And then even as, 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 as a parent, we don't know from which angle the enemy will come because of that, uh, because of that uh, disobedience. If you remember Vashti in Esther, Vashti as wife, as queen, she disobeyed her husband's instruction to come to, to, come to him. She disobeyed as a wife to her husband and she disobeyed as a, as, a, as a queen to the king. And with that disobedience, she walked out from under the covering and he couldn't protect her. The decree that the, the nobles, the seven nobles came up with, became the, the, what happened to her, what, what transpired with her. And so we have to be, ensure, be, be careful and ensure that disobedience, we are not disobedient to our, our covering authority. Nothing is wrong with the Lord's institution of marriage. It is an umbrella that works, but only if you open it up. You have to use it according to the manufacturer's design. The Lord designed the institution of marriage as a covering, as a shade, as a shelter, as protection for all who desire to come under its shade. And so we have to be mindful of the, the wiles of the enemy. So, so when the husband does something or the wife does something and we decide we're going to walk away in, in response, in reaction to that, and we walk out from that, we expose ourselves to what the enemy can now do to us because we have walked out. And that's why it says, the vows say, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish. We stay under that covering irrespective of, there have been testimonies of persons who have stayed under the covering of marriage, even in the face of infidelity. And it has been a safe, place and space for them because that is how the institution is designed to cover you and protect you. The institution of marriage must be a safe place and space for your spouse. Let us not allow the enemy of this institution to shift you from under this covering. He uses pain to shift you. He uses rejection. He uses disappointment. He uses hurt, abuse, discontent, unmet expectations to encourage you to make the choice to move. But I want to tell you today to stay under the covering of marriage. Stay under this umbrella of the institution of marriage. Do not move because it will cover you. That is how the Lord, the architect, the designer of this institution designed it to be a safe space and place. Because when you do, if you move out from under the covering, you now have to deal with the rain in addition to the issues that you face. So stay under the wings of God, hallelujah. Stay under the wings of God, a place of covering. You can make it. You can make it because God is our covering authority and it is under the wings of God. In this place, it is a place of emotional security. If you stay under the protective covering, the protective shade of the wings of God, 
and the institution of marriage. Before we go into prayer, as we prepare our hearts for prayer tonight, I want us to listen to this song as we prepare our hearts for prayer. And right after, we will go into a time of prayer. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. We bless your name tonight, God. Father, we thank you that you are the all-knowing and you are the all-wise God. And so, God, when you establish, when you establish a, a purpose and you establish a plan, God, it is to bring glory and honor to you, God. It is to represent you, God. It is to represent your 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 honor, your glory. And so tonight, God, we pray for marriages tonight, God. Father, thank you that this was the first institution, God, because you are interested in family. And God, you said the structure, God, that you are the head of man and the man is the head of the woman. And so, God, we thank you tonight, God, for for God enlightening us, God, and, and reminding us, God, of, of who we are and how we ought to operate God under your pattern and under your plan and under your purpose. So God, I pray God that that as women, God, that we will continue to submit to our husband, God. And Father, we know, God, that sometimes in our position, God, it is at times hard to submit. But God, regardless of what we may think or how we may feel, regardless of our opinion, we would understand, God, that we as wives need to understand how to submit to our husband and, God, that we will submit to our own husband, God. So, God, I pray for strength. I pray for courage. I pray for wisdom, God, as women, God, to just do and to obey your word and to become, God, all that you have established us as, as wives to be within the, within the institution of marriage. So, God, I pray, God, that that we would grow, that we would develop, God, that we would become all, God. We would become all as we learn to rest in you, God, as we learn to find shelter in you, God, as we learn, God, to, to be covered under 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 your wings tonight, God, and we would heal ourselves totally to you, God. So, God, I pray, God, that we will be obedient, God, and Father, that we would learn to wait patiently, wait patiently upon you, God, in the name of Jesus. So, God, we we submit, God, we commit our all emotion to, to, to you, Father, because we know at times, God, that we as female can become very emotional, God. And so tonight, God, I pray for emotional wellness within us, God, that our thoughts would not stray, our thoughts would, would, would not go outside, God. And Father, even when it goes outside, God, that we would learn to bring our thoughts into subjection and into obedience to your spirit in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, that our mind would be strong in the name of Jesus. And we will remember that we have the mind of Christ. So, God, I pray, God, for transformation, God, in our mind, transformation in our thoughts, transformation in our will, that we will submit our own will unto you O oh god that we will not be, be be carried away with who we are and our image god and our reputation but god that we will learn to submit god to our husbands and i pray god that husbands would learn to love their wives god and father 
together, God, the, the, the unity in the spirit, God, would be there within the husband and wife. Oh, God, we pray. I pray for that oneness, God, which you call a, a mystery tonight, Father. But, God, I, I, I know we don't need to understand the mystery, but, God, that we need to, to yield ourselves to each other other God that will bring us into that oneness God that we will be so wrapped up and tied up and tangled up in each other God that God without even realizing that we have been brought into that place of oneness in the name of Jesus so God I, I say thank you tonight I say thank you tonight that together God we can rest under your wings. We can rest in your shade, God. We can rest in you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. As as together, God, we 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 learn God to 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 leave God that that legacy and that and that God inheritance for our children our and our children's children that we would leave the rich legacy of leaving and cleaving and uniting and and being one god and walking together in unity and in harmony tonight god so god i pray god i pray i pray for strong minds i pray for strong wills i pray for strong strong god submission to you god and to each other so God together that we will become all that you have have purpose for us God within marriage today God so God we will understand that marriage is honorable we will understand that marriage is honorable God it has nothing to, to, to do God with how we feel God and I pray that our emotions would not get in our way today God for it has nothing to do with our emotional will but God we submit our, our very emotions and our feelings God unto you God as God you strengthen us into becoming Coming, the man and the woman of God that you have purposed us to be as you establish us together as a unit God leaving and cleaving and becoming one flesh in submission and loving God that husbands will love their wives God as you love the church and give yourself and God that they will be able to present their wives as Bless God as great representation, God of the husband and great representations, God of who you are today, God. Keep our minds focused, keep our minds strong, God, as we heal ourselves together to one another and as we heal ourselves unto you, God, in Jesus' name. God, we continue to magnify your name. We continue to thank you for your kindness and your goodness. God, even as one says, your loving kindness and your tender mercy. We, oh God, continue to lift, oh God, marriages and all those who are on this platform tonight in the name of Jesus. And so we pray for healthy marriages. God, even as we abide under the shadow of your wing, even as we are covered, oh God, and are protected, I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that we will have a healthy relationship. That, oh God, that emotionally, spiritually, financially, oh God, and all the areas that pertains to life and godliness and the unification and the and the health of this of our marriages that god that we be healthy in the name of jesus we pray oh god to for the removal oh god of any ailment any thing or infestation that will bring oh god uh disharmony and disruption oh god to the unity oh father god in the name of jesus and so we are praying tonight Oh God, for every marriage, oh God, that that uh, we will have 
breakthrough. Uh, I pray, God, that we will burst free and break through. God, oh God, all our uh, issues that God, that we would find ourselves, oh God, finding freedom in Christ, that we would find liberty, liberty in you that will cause us, oh God, to explode in our relationship, that will cause us to blossom greater in the name of Jesus that has caused us to bear fruit and that more abundantly in the name of Jesus. I pray God that we would be able to help one another, to build one another, to strengthen one another. God, that we'd be free, oh God, to converse one with the other. Oh Father, that we'd be free, oh God, to minister one to the other, Lord God, so that there be no, oh God, ramifications, no issues, oh God, between us in the name of Jesus. So Lord God, tonight I pray your touch, I pray your healing power in the name of Jesus. God, I pray the oil, oh God, will be poured upon our marriages, will be poured upon every marriage on this platform in the name of Jesus. And, and, and so God, that there be healthy marriages, God. That there be healthy marriages in the name of Jesus. But oh God, healthy, oh hallelujah. Healthy marriages, I declare it tonight. In the name of Jesus, I pray, oh God, that there be, oh God, no stumbling block. Oh God, I, that we would go, uh, 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 and have our own personal breakthrough. Father, there are things that we struggle with. There are things that, oh God, are hindering us. There are things, oh God, that are keeping us back and, and, and we do not know how to, oh God, face them, how to confront them. But I pray tonight for courage. I pray for determination. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, for the strengthening of your people. Oh, glory to God. I pray for your grace that will cause us to overcome, Father God, that will cause us to rise above, oh, God, the situation and, and, and become healthy and fruit-bearing, oh, God, and free. In the name of Jesus, Lord, tonight, let there be liberty, God. Let there be liberty. Let there be love. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. And we declare the life of God and the light of God. And that there be no darkness between us, dear God. That there be no gulf. Oh, God, let there be no gulf between us husbands and wives today in the name of Jesus. But let there be, oh God, unity and life in the name of Jesus. So, hallelujah. In vain as I pray for uh, your, uh, your, not only for your intervention, but your invasion in the name of Jesus that really, oh God, will bring us really together uh, as you have intended God, as you had purpose marriages to be. And, and so everyone on this platform, God, today will be a witness of your power, that everyone will testify, oh God, of your greatness and of what you, you were able to do, oh God, from us being, ah, uh, God, even not so well, hallelujah, but, but that we be made whole and completely whole, hallelujah. Fruit bearing whole, life giving whole. Oh God, witnessing, oh God, whole in the name of Jesus. So thank you, Father, for everyone, God. Oh my God, thank you for everyone. I thank you for that brother, oh God, who struggles today, even with his sexuality. Oh God, oh that sister, Lord God, that there be understanding that God, the eyes of our understanding will be enlightened, God. And, and this is what we pray for as we thank you, oh God, for, for Errol. And we thank you for Mark. Nick I forgot his name. Nichols. Hallelujah. And we thank you for, for, for Reverend Ruth. As God, as you have imparted to them and they release to us, I pray, God, that the words uh, and the meditation of their heart 
that they would unfold to us, oh God, the, the, the mysteries of this whole, hallelujah, marriage union, oh God, thing, God, that they would bring it, oh God, to life to us, God, that we would be able to gain and to see and to understand and to appreciate, oh God, uh, and the misinformation of all the years that we have received, even in the church, Lord God, the misconception that have been, oh God, propagated, God, that we will be able Oh God, because of your servants, oh God, that we'll be able to remove, eradicate, and receive, oh God, hallelujah, new life through their ministry, God. So, Father, we are thankful for them. Uh, we are thankful for them. And, and, and pray, God, hallelujah, that our ears will be attentive and our spirit will be receptive in the name of that we will come short in nothing that you have destined why you have brought us into this onto this platform in jesus name today and we give you all the glory and the praise because we know it is you who work in us dear god and we bless you holy ghost we bless you holy ghost in jesus name amen